to hear that. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and a happy Thanksgiving to all. My name is Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. I am coming to you live from Parsons Field in Brookline, Massachusetts, here to bring you some high school Thanksgiving football between the visiting Newton North High Tigers, seen over here with the white jerseys and orange jersey numbers, and the hosting Brookline High Warriors, seen over here on my left in the black jerseys with red jersey numbers. Long running local rivalry between Brookline High and Newton North. It's always, always a bigger deal when these two teams play. And of course, these two schools coming off one of the uh, biggest deal games they've had in some time in last weekend's boys soccer division one state championship game where Brookline ultimately prevailed in double overtime two to one over Newton North to capture their first title in program history. The game winner of course being scored in stoppage time of the second overtime by senior Isaac Heffes. But we're here for the different kind of football here today. The kind played on a gridiron. So without further ado, let's take a look at the uh, rosters for these two teams. Uh, we're set for a 10 a.m. start, so we're uh, you know, a little less than 20 minutes out from getting this underway. But for now, let's take a look at the rosters. We'll start by looking at uh, the visitors, the Newton North High Tigers, who come into this contest with a 4-8 and eight record. They are riding a two-game winning streak back-to-back -back wins against Hopkinton and Medfield. The Tigers bested Hopkinton 26-14 and then bested Medfield 8-0. Of course, both of those wins coming in those two extra games that, uh, that are given to teams that didn't make the playoffs. Same thing happened with Brookline. Uh, but for now, like I said, 4-8 and eight the record on the season so far for the Tigers. Let's take a look at their roster. Going in order of jersey number... We have first a senior running back and linebacker and co-captain, number one, Nate Leone. A senior wide receiver, defensive back, and co-captain, number two, Clinton Jacobs. A senior running back and linebacker and co-captain, number three, Bryce Busa. A senior wide receiver and defensive back, number four, Daniel Salame. Number, uh, a junior running back and linebacker, number five, Akil Rather. A junior wide receiver and defensive back, number six, Noah Goldhagen. A senior wide receiver and defensive back, number seven, Subomi Soyoye. A senior wide receiver and defensive back, number eight, Andrew Lunds. I think just to save some time, I'm just going to go through the years. Uh, a junior, number nine, Theo Bentis. A junior, number 10, Brendan O'Gwin. A junior, number 11, Adam Landry. A senior, number 12, TJ Cox. A sophomore, number 14, Hayden Willen. A senior, number 15, Matthew Kearney. A senior, number 16, Melvin Demedieros. A junior, number 17, Tim Curvin. A senior, number 18, Billy Blumenthal. A junior, number 20, Luca Mancone. A senior, number 23, Jason McNew. A junior, number 24, Mark Vasiliev. A senior, number 25, Peter Moradian. A junior, number 27, Sam Brambilla. A sophomore, number 30, Logan Long. A senior, number 31, Chase Jacob. A junior, number 32, Brad McNew. A sophomore, number 34, Nathaniel Day. A sophomore, number 36, Donnell Harvey. A sophomore, number 37, Nathan Walsh. A sophomore, number 38, Jacob Demio. A sophomore, number 39, Adam Lieb. A sophomore, number 41, Leandro Paola. 
A sophomore, number 43, Tom McCarthy. A senior, number 44, Jason Antonellis. A freshman, number 46, Scott Kaisey. A sophomore, number 47, Jason Danzig. A sophomore, number 48, Ajani Gordon. A sophomore, number 49, Nick Santangelo. A senior, number 50, Holland Hargens. A junior, number 51, Chris Thompson. A senior co-captain, number 52, Colin LaRossi. A senior, number 53, Gavin Stein. A senior, number 54, Ian Cotter. A junior, number 55, Brandon Kasanganayi. Kasanganayi. A junior, number 56, Connor Kiley. A sophomore, number 57, John Joregui. A junior, number 58, Noah Waistcoat. A senior, number 61, Mayan Fogel. A senior, number 62, Tom Kissiel. A freshman, number 63, Quinn O'Malley. A sophomore, number 64, David Grusby. A sophomore, number 65, Will Sonia. A sophomore, number 67, Matthew Guarino. A freshman, number 68, Jordy Carius. A junior, number 70, Johannes Schull. A freshman, number 71, Juan Perez. A junior, number 72, Colin Dowling. A senior, number 73, Danny Barber. A sophomore, number 74, Tim, uh, Tim Mendicina. A junior, number 75, Marcus Davis. A junior, number 76, Alex Moorfield. A senior, number 77, Tommy McMillan. A sophomore, number 79, Ben Brambilla. A junior, number 80, Rowan Fort. A senior, number 81, Joe Murphy. A junior, number 82, Lucas Diller. A sophomore, number 83, Clark Gates. A junior, number 84, Aiden Kizito. Kizito. A junior, number 85, George Nilsson. A senior, number 88, Ethan Exidy. A freshman, number 90, Lake Quackenbos. A sophomore, number 92, Griffin Oliver. And a sophomore, number 94, Owen Plosios. Head coach of the Newton North High football team is Nick Capodilupo with assistant coaches Greg DeConcilis, Brad Mayer, Napoleon Miller, and Donovan Fainor. So that is the roster for the visiting Newton North High Tigers as we are getting uh, close to game time. We're about 11 minutes out. And we'll just be waiting for the teams to come out at that point. But in the meantime, let's take a look at the roster for the hosting Brookline High Warriors. Again, going in order of jersey number and just saying the years to save us some time. First off, we have a junior co-captain, number one, Nico Braun. A junior, number two, Donnell O'Neill. A senior, number three, Matthew Richardson. A sophomore, number four, Joshua Karp. A sophomore, number five, Andrew Bamberg. A junior, number seven, Nate Asfawosin. A senior, number eight, Adriano DiMarco. A sophomore, number ten, Chase Halfkenny. A junior, number eleven, Charlie Ziefert. A senior, number 15, Miles Whalen. A senior, number 17, Parrish Hertz. A senior, number 18, Charlie Ladge. A senior, number 19, Rex Dube. A sophomore, number 20, Darren Grant. 
a senior, number 21, Jad Kassir. A sophomore, number 22, Anuj Bajumder. A junior, number 23, Chris Ruder. A junior, number 24, Kamari Jones. A junior, number 25, Pelayo Harais. A senior co-captain, number 26, Cam Lazama. A junior, number 27, Isaiah Cater. A junior, number 28, Nikhil Mitra. A junior, number 30, Darius Grant. A junior, number 32, Cameron Evans. A senior, number 33, Aaron Feldman. A senior, number 34, Enrique Rodas. A senior, number 35, Max Little. A sophomore, number 36, Jack Henry. A sophomore... A sophomore, number 38, Kevin Asir. A senior, number 44, Benjamin Wilson. A sophomore, number 46, Thomas May. A senior, number 50, Sean Ebanks. A sophomore, number 52, Matteo Casagrande. A sophomore, number 54, William Finkley. A junior, number 56, Bora Schlosser. A junior, number 59, Rayshon Thompson Morales. A sophomore, number 60, Jack Maloney. A senior, number 61, Daquan Small. A senior, number 62, Jack Stanton. A senior, number 63, Aniket Majumder. A sophomore, number 64, Fenno Galaberta. A senior, number 66, Hao Feng Lin. A junior, number 67, Malachi Seely. Or no, excuse me, Malachi Seely. A sophomore, number 68, Jesse Thompson. A senior, number 69, Brendan Higgins. A sophomore, number 70, Giovanni Osorio. A senior, number 71, Gino Jock. A senior co-captain, number 72, Caden Nystwin. A junior, number 78, Gael Paris Jeffries. A sophomore, number 80, Jaden Daniel. And lastly, a junior, number 81, Keitano Drinkwater. Head coach of the Brookline High football team is Chad Hunt, with assistant coaches Ailson Carvalho, Dale Karasek, Ray Smith, Tyler Church, Deshaun Richardson, and Mikhail Negron. So that is the roster for the hosting Brookline High Warriors. We are about seven minutes out from our scheduled 10 a.m. start time. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. Happy to bring you live coverage of this Thanksgiving high school football game. Remember, if you enjoy the uh, broadcast, be sure to hit that like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all the uh, all my upcoming live streams. And be sure to leave your comments in the live chat. You know, uh, either. You can say hello to your fellow viewers if there's anything you want to say to me. If I'm pronouncing any names wrong or I have anything factually incorrect or there's any fun facts you want to share, you can uh, leave those in the live chat. You can also shout out your favorite players on your favorite team in the live chat. Um, it doesn't have to just have to be the players. You can shout out the coaches, the cheerleaders, uh, the athletic trainers, anyone really. Um, you know, I saw in the news recently that uh, Channel 5, the ABC Boston affiliate, um, Unfortunately, we'll not be able to do their traditional high-five salute to Thanksgiving heroes, which is usually a big undertaking uh, from the sports director, Mike Lynch, to try and, you know, give some coverage to as many Thanksgiving football games across the state as possible and try and have some, you know, stories about really just anyone that deserved a shout-out, whether it, be it was a player or a coach, you know, uh, like I said, cheerleaders, trainers, uh, maybe a, a, a faculty member who's just been a big supporter of the team um, or is retiring after a long career, anything like that. And so in the spirit of that, you know, as someone who uh, has worked with Mike Lynch in the past, I was once an intern over at uh, Channel 5 back in my college days. And so, uh, you know, 
in the hopes of maybe carrying on the spirit of what he was hoping for a little bit here today, I encourage you all to leave, uh, you know, to shout out some of the, uh, you know, your favorite uh, members of either the Brookline High or the Newton North High community, you know, no matter which team is your team, no matter which school is your school, shout out whoever you think deserves a shout out here on this Thanksgiving day, you know, let us know who you're thankful for and do so in the live chat. So with that said, uh, we're about five minutes out. Uh, like I said before, Newton North coming into this with a four and eight record. Uh, Brookline entering at one and nine, having just collected their first win of the season uh, about 11 days ago in a game against Sharon. A 40 to 29 victory gave Brookline their first victory after uh, going winless through the first eight games, missing the playoffs, but still getting those last two regular season games as a, as a bit of a consolation. Lost the first one to Dedham in a close contest, 21 to 13, but then bounced back with a nice high scoring win over Sharon, 40 to 29. And now we can see the teams coming out. Well, we see the visitors, the Newton North High Tigers coming out now. Like I said, they come into this with a 4-8 and eight record, uh, riding a two-game win streak after victories over Hopkinton and Medfield. And soon we shall see the Brookline High Warriors coming out on the field. The uh, scoreboard clock over to the right, no longer showing the time on of day, but rather the quarter clock. As now here comes the home team, the Brookline High Warriors. PA announcer now announcing things. So you know we're almost underway. And so now they send out the captains for the opening coin toss. For Brookline, you can see the co-captains, number one, Nico Braun, number 26, Cam Lazama, and number 72, Caden Nystwin. For Newton North, there are four captains, Nate Leone, Clinton Jacobs, Bryce Busa, and Colin LaRossi. the call and the toss. And Newton North has won and elected to receive. So not deferring, they are going to take it right away to start things out. Brookline will be playing from the right. Uh, they might be playing a little more with the sun in their faces. It's, it's more pointed towards us here in the press box than it is in any particular direction. But that's how we'll start at Newton North in the white jerseys with the orange jersey numbers. We'll be playing from my left and receiving the opening kickoff while Brookline in the black jerseys with red jersey numbers will be kicking it off from my right. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in today. My name is Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. Happy to bring you live coverage of this contest. Like I said before, if you're enjoying the broadcast, hit that like button. Uh, if you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I highly encourage you to engage in the live chat, either to give shout outs to your favorite members of your respective community, whether it be the Brookline or Newton North communities. Uh, maybe to say hi to your fellow viewers in the chat or to just let me know if there's any uh, corrections that need to be made as we get ready for our national anthem. We have served or are currently serving in our armed forces. We'd like to thank both veterans and current military personnel for your service to our country. Now we invite all to stand for the playing of our national anthem.
All right, that was the playing of our national anthem. And now... As I uh, reposition my camera to get us started, we are about to get underway. Again, this annual Thanksgiving football contest between local rivals Brookline High and Newton North High. A long-running tradition that, uh, well, wasn't able to happen last year because obviously at this time last year we weren't having a fall season. So a really nice return to, to uh, tradition here at Parsons Field. Brookline High getting ready to kick off. It will be number three, Matthew Richardson. Back to receive for Newton North. I see one of the returners is number 10, Brendan O'Gwin. And the other one looks like, the other return man looks like he's got a number in the 40s. We'll see where this kick goes. Richardson signals to his right, to his left. Here he comes. There's the kick and we are underway. Deep kick. Taken by the Tigers return man, he cuts up the middle, tripped up, and we got a flag on the first play of the game after the run back by number 48, a Johnny Gordon. Now we just wait to see what the flag is. And it's a block in the back against Newton North, so the Tigers will be pushed back a little further for their starting field position. So the Tigers starting close to their own 15. Opening snap, and they go for a shovel to number 10. That's O'Gwin. He comes around the edge, gets a short gain, might have gotten about four. So it uh, looks like he might have gotten five or six, actually, on that one off, off the toss from uh, the quarterback, who I believe is number 14, Hayden Willen. So Newton North starting with what is technically a pass, but operates more similarly to a run play. Willen in shotgun, they send a tight end in motion. There's the snap, handoff going up the middle, tackled by Drinkwater. Caetano Drinkwater was the first one to the ball carrier. Um, who was, it looks like the carry was for no gain. I think it might have been number five, Akil Rather, on the carry. Not entirely sure, though. A crucial first down now for Newton North on their opening possession. Third down and about three yards to go after what I think might have actually been a one-yard gain on that handoff to Rather. Hayden Willen in shotgun. He's got Rather to his right, two receivers either side. Snap to Willen. He's looking to throw. Fires to his left. Got his man. Did he stay in bounds? Yes, he did. Getting the feed in was number 34, Nathaniel Day. That converts the first down for Newton North. And the Tigers move the chains. First and 10 from about the 29. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Rather to the left of Willen. Takes a snap, quick throw, joggled. Oh, it's picked off. It's being run back. This is Drinkwater. He's going to go all the way. Pick six for Brookline. Caetano Drinkwater gets Brookline on the board first with the thrilling pick six. Three, 
Now that is a turnaround right there. They went for a quick screen pass, but the throw was well behind the receiver, just couldn't haul it in. And Drinkwater just in the right place at the right time as Richardson puts up the kick and nails the PAT and gives Brookline a 7-0 lead to start. Nine minutes and 48 seconds on the clock here in the first quarter, and we've got our first score already. Keitano Drinkwater. Usually his name is said more frequently as one of the team's top receivers, but showing some defensive prowess uh, in a couple of different ways on that possession. Came through with a nice run stop earlier in the possession, but then Newton North still able to convert the first down. But then he is in the right place at the right time for the pick six. Little over 30 yards, I think, on that return because the line of scrimmage was the 29, and it was a few yards past the line of scrimmage that he caught that one. Richardson, after the successful PAT, will now line up to kick this one away. Signals to his right and to his left. Here comes the kick. And it's a deep one, chased down and downed, or no, they down it in the end zone. It looked like for a second, like it might be run back by the Newton North return man, who I believe is a kill rather but instead it's called a touchback. And so Newton North will start on the 20. We got our first comment in the live chat from David Silberg. Nice to see you in the live chat again, David. And a very emphatic yes, which I can only assume is in response to Drinkwater's pick six. First and 10 from the 20 for Newton North as they start their second possession. They send O'Gwin in motion, but they hand it off to Rather. Rather cuts to the right, gets tackled and brought down. Nice grab in the open field by number 50, Sean Ebanks. That run went for about two yards, so it'll be second and eight from about the 22. Aiden Willen, the quarterback in shotgun. He's got Rather to his right. Three receivers to his left, one to his right. Takes the snap, dropping back, looking to throw. He's got time. Throws over the middle. Picked off by Richardson. Matthew Richardson now running it back. There are flags on the play as Richardson gets dragged down. We'll see what the flag is. This is going to be a big call. Not just on which team it's on, but also on whether it's before or after the interception. Based on what's happening, it looks like the pass interference on Brookline. So a tough penalty for Brookline undoes what would have been their second interception in as many possessions. But, I mean, you have to wonder if possibly the penalty was why that there was no, there were no Newton North receivers within the same zip code of that throw, it seemed like. Like, it just seemed like an absolute gimme, but instead, it's now going to be first and ten. And they are going to fake the handoff. Willen's going to keep it himself, and he gets tackled and brought down. Combined efforts of Cam Lazama and I believe Sean Ebanks. There was a minor scuffle on the near side of the field, but it looks like it was broken up pretty quickly. Second and four now for the Tigers after the QB keeper by Hayden Willen, who now comes out and shotgun three receivers to his left, one to his right. Takes the snap, quick throw, hits his man, Takes off running, but tackled well in the open field. Nice grab again by Drinkwater. Pass was completed to Nathaniel Day again. 
And Day, of course, had the first down catch on third down in the Tigers' first possession right before the pick six by Drinkwater, which currently has Brookline leading 7-0. Third and four for Newton North. Willen takes a snap, pump fakes, throws up, hits his man, and he's got nobody in front of him. He's being chased down from behind, shakes off that last tackle. He's going to go all the way. Number two, the co-captain Clinton Jacobs on the pass from Hayden Willen. They get a long score there. Over 50 yards on that passing touchdown. Newton North now on the board. Seven to six the score as they line up for the PAT. Number 32, Brad McNew will be kicking the PAT. Snap, hold down, kick is up. And no good, he missed it wide right. So Brookline stays on top, if only by a little bit, seven to six. It's been an exciting first quarter already. And there's only been two possessions, both ending in a score. One ended in a pick six by Brookline's Keitano Drinkwater. And one ended in a 50-plus uh, yard passing touchdown from Hayden Willen to Clinton Jacobs. Seven to six the score. Brookline still leads and now they will be receiving their first kickoff. Back deep to receive for Brookline is number five, Andrew Bamberg, and number 32, Cameron Evans. For Newton North, it'll be number 10, Brendan O'Gwin, kicking this away. Line drive kick is caught by Evans. Evans running it up the right sideline, finds a small gap, gets it a little bit past the 30 yard line, and that is where Brookline will start their first offensive possession of this ball game. So at about the 31 yard line, it'll be first and 10, our first time seeing the Brookline offense today. Quarterback Joshua Karp in shotgun Two receivers either side, one back to his right. Carp takes a snap, drops back, looking to throw. Patiently stepping up, now taking off. Shakes off one tackle, now being dragged down. After a medium gain, might have been about four yards. And so it'll be about second and about six or seven yards to go for the Warriors or maybe five yards actually. So about a four or five yard gain for Carp on the keeper there. Saw the hole up the middle and just took off. Snap to Carp, fakes the handoff, quick throw, hits his man, that's a first down. As that ball is caught by number one, Nico Braun. Just a quick slant route off the play auction. And Brookline gets their first first down. Now it'll be first and 10 from their own 44. Looks like they got trips to the left, one receiver to the right, uh, one back to the left of Carp in shotgun. Carp takes a snap. Hands off to Chase Halfkenny. Halfkenny's got a bit of a hole. Bursts ahead for another first down. Chase Halfkenny, a nice 10-plus yard run 
gets it across midfield into Newton North territory. And good for a first down. This will be the first offensive play starting in opposing territory for either team. As again, they got trips left, one to the right. Handoff to, no, it's a fake. Carp's taking it himself. Faked out me even, and a nice big gain for the quarterback. That's going to be close to the first down marker. Looks like it's going to be second and one for the Warriors. Three receivers to the right now, one to the left. Carp now calling an audible. Snap, fakes the give, quick throw to the right, hits his man again, and that's going to be an easy first down. If I'm not mistaken, I think that was Braun on the catch once again. And indeed it was. Nico Braun once again on the quick slant to the right. Simple in-cutting slant. And I think it just shows how Brookline has really grown their passing game over the course of this season, that they're able to hit those quick timing throws so well. Carp takes a snap, hands off to Halfkenny. Halfkenny goes up the middle, breaks off one tackle, and then bowls over his second tackler to get a couple extra yards. A four-yard gain on the carry by Halfkenny, and this will be second and six now for Brookline. Halfkenny standing to the left of Carp. Three receivers to the left. Snap, give to Halfkenny. Halfkenny runs to his right, and another short gain is going to get them close to the marker, but not quite there. It'll be third down and what looks to be about three yards to go for Brookline. I mean, they are pretty conceivably in four-down territory at this stage, close to the Newton North 20-yard line. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Carp takes a snap, fakes the give to half. Kenny throws it to his left, caught by Drinkwater! Drinkwater with the hands goes up for that one and comes down with the ball. Another first down for Brookline. And now inside the red zone. First and 10 now from the Newton North, 14. Brookline trying to extend what is currently a one point lead as they lead seven to six. Carp and shotgun, two receivers either side. Snapped Carp. Fakes the give to half. Kenny throws over the middle. Off timing there for the pass to Drinkwater. Just slightly behind his uh, receiver on that throw. And that's part of why I was so impressed with the consecutive completions to Nico Braun on those quick slants because those aren't easy to time correctly at the high school level. You know, we've now seen a couple of throws from both teams' quarterbacks go behind their receivers one of them, of course, leading to the pick six that currently has Brookline holding the lead. Second and 10 now. Three receivers to the right. Carp takes the snap, drops back, looking to throw. Now decides to tuck it and run, goes up the middle. He's got some room to go. He's still going. Fighting his way across the field. And let's see where they mark him. Looks like it's going to be third and short. Third and, or no, no, they're going to give him, that's going to be a first down. A successful first down run for Josh Karp on the keeper. First and goal now from the four. Four. 
Snap, give to half Kenny. He goes up the middle, hits a wall, and he's going nowhere. It'll now be second and goal. As we got just a minute 20 and counting left here in the first quarter, Brookline trying to finish off this drive. As we will soon be switching sides. <laughs> Carp takes the snap, gives to half Kenny again, again hits a wall and is dragged down short of the goal line. It'll now be third and goal for the Warriors. And now he, here's where it's an interesting decision because if they fail on this third down, they are close enough that they could conceivably hit a field goal with Richardson. But would you prefer to, to risk not getting a score and maybe pinning your opponent deep in their own territory? It looks like we're just going to wait out the rest of the, or no, I think a timeout has been called. A timeout has been called by Brookline, so the clock will freeze with 16 seconds left here in the first quarter. Brookline will have third and goal from about the one yard line, maybe the two. And so Brookline coach ja uh, Chad Hunt will have a big decision to make in terms of what to go for on this play call on third and goal. And should it not find the end zone, they'll have a big decision again to make on fourth and goal. The current score, Brookline seven, Newton North six. Brookline getting its points off a uh, 30, you know, maybe 31, 32 yard pick six by number 81, Keitano Drinkwater. While for Newton North, they had a 50-plus yard passing touchdown from quarterback Hayden Willen to receiver and co-captain Clinton Jacobs. Out of the timeout, third and goal from the one, maybe the one and a half. Two backs in the backfield with half Kenny and Braun. Snap, Carp's going to keep it, run to his left, try and bully his way through. There's the signal, touchdown, Brookline. Josh Karp takes it in himself for the one yard keeper touchdown. Brookline now goes up 13 to six and will try for the extra point. Number three, Matthew Richardson comes out, was successful on the first PAT. And the kick is up and off the upright, no good. The score remains 13 to six. Brookline with the lead over Newton North with nine seconds here in the first quarter. Remember, if you're enjoying the broadcast, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel uh, if you want to stay up to date on all my upcoming uh, athletic live streams. Um, engage in the live chat if you want to give shout outs to any of your favorite players, uh, coaches, cheerleaders, trainers, doesn't matter. You know, maybe you got someone working as game staff right now. They're working the tickets or the PA and you want to send them a little shout out, doesn't matter. Thanksgiving is a day for giving thanks. And this simple little way to do that here on this live stream. As now Matthew Richardson sets up for the kickoff. There's the kick from Richardson. It's a low skipping one. It's going to go all the way back to Brendan O'Gwin. He scoops it up, now runs towards the middle and gets hit and dragged down. 
So Newton North will take over, and they'll have one play before we end the first quarter, just two seconds on the quarter clock as of right now. It'll be first and 10 from just inside the 25. Uh, Newton North starting at their own 23 yard line. This will be the last play of the first quarter as we've got two seconds on the clock. Hayden Willen in shotgun, three receivers to his left, one to his right. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, looking, still looking, has to tuck it and run to his left and he gets dragged down just past the line of scrimmage. Might be a one-yard gain there for Willen. And that will bring the first quarter to a close. Through the first quarter, the score, the Brookline High Warriors 13, the Newton North High Tigers 6. So as we take our brief break to switch sides of the field, I am happy to say that uh, for the first time on my live broadcast, we have a paying sponsor and it's a locally owned business at that. So here comes our first ad for Music Go Round Boston. Are you a lover of music? Are you thinking of learning to play, but you don't want to spend too much on your first instrument? Maybe you're already a musician, but you can't afford to break the bank on your next soundboard. Or maybe you have some old equipment you need to get rid of. Well, either way, Music Go Round Boston is the place you need to be. Music Go Round Boston is the largest retailer of used musical equipment in New England. The store opened in 2010 under the ownership of former Brookline High soccer parent Phil Chernin and has been growing a dedicated following as a great local spot for either buying or selling used gear. And when I talk about selling your used equipment, I don't mean like one of those places where you bring in an old product and get back like one-tenth of the price you paid for it. When you bring your used gear to Music Go Round, as we get started with the second quarter, I didn't time this properly as we go for a shovel pass to number seven for a short gain, but I'm gonna try and finish out this ad as we go. When you bring your used gear to Music Go Round, one of their certified buyers will examine your product and offer you a fair price based on its market value. They will explain the basis of the offer and even tell you how much they hope to resell it for, operating on a model of complete customer transparency. If you like the offer, they will pay you on the spot or you can trade in your used equipment for one of the products available in the store. Music Go Round prides itself on the quality of the used products it offers. All products are tested and retested before selling to ensure they're in great working condition. And if you're in the mood for something new, Music Go Round also stocks a broad assortment of the most popular new accessories at the best prices. Third and short for Newton North, snap to Willen, fakes the handoff, and gets dragged down behind the line of scrimmage, big sack by Brookline's number 77, who is not on my roster. And so that'll be a big stop. Oh, that is number 77, William Finkley, who is listed as 54 on the roster incorrectly. As we get ready for fourth down, wrapping up the ad, visit Music Go Round Boston, located at 810 Worcester Street in Natick, or call the store for more information at 508-647-6874 as the punt is now away. And it's a shallow one that Brookline is just going to let bounce as they take over. So once again, visit Music Go Around Boston at 810 Worcester Street in Natick or call 508-647-6874. And be sure to thank the folks at Music Go Around Boston for sponsoring this broadcast. So... I mistimed that a little bit. I thought the break between quarters uh, would be a little would be a little bit, uh, you know, I thought the break would be a little bit longer. But you know, you live and you learn. Like I said, that's our first uh, that's our first sponsor, our first ad read here on these broadcasts. And I really mean it when I say, you know, uh, thank those people for supporting my broadcast because the more paid sponsors I have, it means I can keep these broadcasts affordable for the teams that I cover. First and 10 for Brookline Carp with all day to throw. Unloads across the middle, jump ball, caught! 
Big catch by number 24, Kamari Jones. Brookline immediately flips it into Newton North territory for a first down on that big floating pass from Josh Karp to Kamari Jones. First and 10 from the Newton North 26. Karp again in shotgun, three receivers to his right, one to the left. Snapped Karp, a toss to Half Kenny on the left. Half Kenny has nowhere to go, gets dragged down near the line of scrimmage, maybe no gain. Nice to see we've already got some shout outs in the chat from Melvin Seedman, go Hayden, number 14. I assume he's referring to the Newton North quarterback, Hayden Willen. And uh, from Michelet Thompson, sorry if I mispronounced your name, shout out to Jesse Thompson, number 68 on Brookline. 13 to six, the Brookline lead as they now have second down and 10, maybe 11. Snapped Carp, drops back, looking to throw. He's got time, throws over the middle, hits his man! Close to the goal line on the catch was number five, Andrew Bamberg. How about the Brookline passing attack making things happen on this possession here? Back to back, big completions, two and three plays sandwiched around the no gain on the run. So it'll be first and goal from the two yard line for Brookline, one, uh, two backs to the right of Carp. Carp takes a snap, gives to Half Kenny. Half Kenny shakes off one tackle and goes in. Touchdown, Brookline. Chase Half Kenny runs it in for the two yard touchdown. Brookline extends its lead 19 to six as Matthew Richardson lines up for another PAT kick. Snap, ball down, kick is on the way, blocked by Newton North. So the play dies and Oh, no, we've got a late flag thrown. There was some arguing from Chad Hunt. It looked like one of the Newton North players might have jumped off sides, and it looked like Chad Hunt was advocating for that call. And there was a late flag throw. So we'll see what happens here. There could be another try for Brookline. And indeed, it is a penalty on Newton North. And it looks like Brookline's gonna go for two. So after the blocked kick and the penalty, they're now gonna try for two. Again, two backs to the right of Carp. Carp takes the snap, fakes the give to Half Kenny, runs to his right, instant hole, and he's in. A successful two point try for Brookline gives them a 21 to 6 lead over Newton North with nine minutes and 16 seconds left here in the second quarter. From David Silberg, wow, Carp looking great, and I have to agree. You know, I've covered a few games for Brookline sparsely throughout this season, and this is the best I've seen Carp all year. He's, you know, he looks crisp. He's on time with his receivers. He's getting some really nice blocking from his linemen that are just, you know, giving him the time he needs. And when he doesn't have that time, he has the confidence to tuck it and run. He's been doing very well so far. as he's now led consecutive scoring drives for the Warriors. Richardson now lining up for the kickoff. His team leads 21 to six. Kick from Richardson goes deep, 
And it's received and run back. Cutting up the middle. Shakes off one tackler, but cannot shake off the other. The return by number 48, Ajani Gordon. Brookline 21, Newton North 6. Nine minutes, eight seconds on the clock here in the second quarter. Snap to Willen, drops back, looking to throw, fires across the middle, almost caught. That pass intended for Nathaniel Day. He wanted an interference call, but he didn't get it. Broken up by number 81, Keitano Drinkwater. He's been everywhere on defense today. Second and 10 now for Newton North. I mean, that's tough. It wasn't a bad throw, and it wasn't like it was dropped. Just a good defensive effort, and no penalty call. Hayden Willen in shotgun. He's got one back to his right, two receivers either side. Sends a receiver in motion. Snap, handoff, running up the middle, and it looks like he's been stuffed. That was number five, Akil Rather, taking that ball up the middle, not finding much room. And we got a flag now thrown on the play. as we await the official signal on the penalty. Looks like unsportsmanlike on Brookline. And so a big penalty on Brookline. Moves the sticks for Newton North. Moves them well upfield. Willen for a quick screen pass to number seven. Quickly tackled in the open field by Matthew Richardson. Newton North trying to take advantage of the confusion with a quick screen pass to Subomi Soyoye. But ultimately not much gain. A nice tackle by Richardson. There was a bit of confusion on Brookline's side as one guy was trying to race off to avoid the 12 men penalty. Instead, it's a simple one yard gain on the screen pass. Second and nine now for Newton North. Willen with three receivers to his right and one to his left. Snap to Willen. Drops back, looking to throw, fires, floats one up to his left. Oh, caught, was he in bounds? They say no, they say he was out of bounds. Pass was caught by Brendan O'Gwin, but couldn't keep the feet in, just a little too far. and instead it'll be a third and nine. Third and long for Newton North as they try and keep the ball moving. Willen and shotgun, again, three receivers to the right, one to the left. Takes a low snap, fakes a handoff, drops back, pass rush in his face, floats one up for Rather and he's got him and he's got some open field. Rather, heading down the sideline, gets tackled by Drinkwater, but that's going to be a first down for Newton North. Brookline brought the house on the pass rush there. 
and between that, the low snap, and the play action design, it looked like Willen was going to be eaten alive, but he manages to get the floater away and hit the hands of Akil Rather, who takes off down the sideline for a first down. Newton North now in Brookline territory at about the 44. Willen sends Sioya in motion, gives him the shovel. Sioya takes off to the right, finds a bit of a hole, gets dragged down, but that one is going to be close to a first down. It's going to be second and about one, maybe inches. As Newton North continuing to move the ball. Trying to put a strong offensive drive together as the Tigers trail the Warriors by two scores. 21 to six, the Brookline lead as we are just under six minutes left here in the first half. Snap to Willen, hands off. Going up the middle is number three, easy first down for the co-captain Bryce Busa. Fresh set of downs for the Tigers. They are now inside the Brookline 30. They're at about the Brookline 25 now. Two receivers on either side of Willen, and he's got Busa to his left. Sends a man in motion, gives the shovel to Sioye again. Sioye tries to burst through a hole, gets dragged down, but not before he gets a, a pretty healthy gain. Looks like about five, four or five yards on, the, uh, on technically the catch for uh, Subomi Sioye on the shovel pass from Hayden Willen. Looks like it'll be second and about six. Willen in shotgun, three receivers to the right, two to the left, empty backfield, sends a man in motion that's Rather, going from the right to the left. Takes a snap, goes up the middle himself, finds a bit of a hole, but gets hit pretty quickly by Ebanks. We'll see where they mark him down. Looks like it's gonna be close, but not a first down. It'll be third and one. The Tigers certainly in four down territory here. So they got two downs to get about a yard. As Brookline, again, trying to, to stop this drive here. Two receivers either side of Willen. And he goes under center this time, takes a snap, goes up the middle himself, and I think he might have the conversion there. And he will. They signal first down pretty quickly. So the Tigers move the chains once again, and they'll have first and 10 from what looks to be about the Brookline 14. Two receivers on either side of Will, and he's got rather to his right. Snap, drops back, looking to throw. Floats one up to his left. Intercepted! My view is a bit cut off by the limits of my camera angle right now, but a big interception for Brookline. That is number 32, Cameron Evans, coming through with that big play that, again, I'm just sorry that the limits of my view uh, couldn't quite capture that. A big interception right around the goal line by Evans for... A big stop for Brookline. Newton North was really getting some momentum together on that drive. But just couldn't finish it. A costly turnover. First and 10. Snapped Carp. Hands it off. Going up the middle. And that's going to be a short gain. 
from Chase Halfkenny. So the score remains 21 to six, the lead for Brookline. Less than three minutes to go now here in the second quarter. It's gonna be second and about seven. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. As it looks like Carp is looking to the sideline for some kind of a signal. And he audibles a bit. Now takes the snap, handoff to, no, fake handoff, and a quick throw out to his left to Nico Braun, who gets tackled pretty quickly. No gain to a short gain. And I think we've got a, t uh, oh, we might have an, do we have an injury timeout? Or no, just a regular timeout. So a timeout called, two minutes and five seconds left here in the second quarter. Brookline, 21, Newton North, six. The scoring thus far, it started with a 30-plus yard pick six for Brookline's Keitano Drinkwater. Um, that put them up seven to nothing. Newton North responded with a 50-plus yard touchdown pass from Hayden Willen to the co-captain Clinton Jacobs. A missed PAT made it seven to six. Then Brookline responded in kind with a long drive that ended with a one yard quarterback keeper by Joshua Carp to get into the end zone. A missed PAT made it 13 to six. And that was how the first quarter ended. Uh, then in the second quarter, Brookline uh, came out quick with a big defensive three and out and then put together a nice drive with a couple of big passes uh, by Carp, that then finished with a two-yard touchdown run by Chase Halfkenny, and a successful two-pointer by Carp made it 21 to six. Third down and about four or five, snap to Carp. Carp looking, looking, tries to take off, loses the football, picked up by a lineman, and the lineman's running with it, but he gets tackled fast. Ball may have come out again. Looks like the officials are saying down by contact on their uh, heads up recovery by the Brookline offensive lineman. I'm trying to see if I can spot the jersey number of the guy who just saved his, uh, saved his team's hide on that one. That looks like number 62, Jack Stanton, who came up with the heads up recovery. I mean, just sort of lucky there. It just bounced right into his hands. And so another stop of the clock might be the two minute warning, might be a timeout, not sure. Uh, but it's gonna be fourth down for Brookline deep in their own territory. So odds are they are going to punt this one. And indeed they will. We see the punter, Matthew Richardson, coming out onto the field. You know, it's gotta be appreciated uh, the ability that Richardson has as both a place kicker and a punter and a kickoff man. As here comes the long snap and a whistle. Oh, are they, are they gonna call 12 men on one of these two teams? Oh, if this is on Newton North, this might be a first down. There's the flag throw. I think they just called 12 players on the field for Newton North, and that gave Brookline a first down. It's a five yard penalty for too many men on the field. That is a costly mistake for the Tigers. We've seen some costly penalties, a couple by Brookline early in this game, the pass interference that undid an interception and an unsportsmanlike that allowed Newton North to really move the ball. But, but now 
Shoes on the other foot, and Brookline's got a first down. Snapped Carp. Give to Halfkenny. Halfkenny finds a bit of an opening and takes off upfield. Flag is thrown on the play. Depending on who it's on, this might be a first down for Brookline, but it also, there's a good chance it's coming back. When a flag is thrown like that, it's usually some kind of blocking violation on the offense. And it is going to be a holding call against Brookline. This will, this play will move back. And so instead of a first down, uh, it will stay first down, but instead it's going to be first and 20 instead of a fresh first and 10. Or, oh, I think it's a spot holding penalty. So it's going to be first and 12 instead of first and 20. Carp takes the snap, hands it off to Halfkenny, who runs to the left and finds a little bit of room, but not much. Probably undid the ba uh, the damage of the penalty to at least, you know, get past the 10 mark. And it looks like maybe a four-yard gain on the run by Halfkenny will make it second and eight. Clock continues to run. Just over a minute left here before halftime. Brookline up 21-6 to six over Newton North. Brookline taking their time. You can tell they don't want to give this one back to Newton North and give them a chance to score before the break. Carp takes the snap, drops back, looking to throw, still looking. Now fires one up. Oh, he's got a man. That's caught by Bamberg. What a pass from Josh Carp to Andrew Bamberg. Again, hats off to the big guys on the line for giving Cart plenty of time for that route to develop. But how about the touch on that throw by Josh Carp? Perfectly placed right into the hands of Bamberg. He didn't have to uh, he didn't really have to cut his stride at all on that one. That one was beautifully placed. Again, one thing to to be excited about, I guess something for Brookline fans to be thankful for. Josh Karp is a sophomore. He's going to be throwing passes for this team for another couple of years. And you can see the growth of his uh, of his game as a quarterback over the course of this season. If you've been watching games throughout this year, you've really seen he's gotten better. You know, obviously it's going to be a big question of of the big guys in front of him and the receivers running the routes for him. Um, but in regards to receivers, I mean, Bamberg is also a sophomore. So he's coming back for another couple years. Drinkwater's a junior, so he's coming back for another year. Um, I haven't seen Donnell O'Neill out there. I think he might be hurt. Uh, he's got one year left. He's also a junior. Nico Braun is also a junior. So in terms of the receiving core, they got a lot of guys coming back. First and 10 for Brookline from the Newton North 25. 43 seconds before halftime, and Brookline now in trying to score mode. Snap to Carp, and I think we've got a false start. Indeed, we do. This is going to be against Brookline for five yards. From David Silberg, nice. They set them up I into thinking they were running out the clock. And it did sort of look like that. Like my interpretation of what was happening at that moment was, you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna give them time. You know, we're not gonna make a serious go of things unless we get a big play. And they got that big chunk play, and now they're going for it. First and fifteen for Brookline. Snap to Carp. Carp drops back, looking, tucking and run, and he's directing blockers in front of him and takes off and gets out of bounds after a big run. Clock stops with 30 seconds as he ran out of bounds. He's going to be close to a first down, but not quite. Looks like he still needs about three or four yards to get to that first down marker. Three. 
Three receivers to the right on the short side of the field. One receiver out to the left. Carp with half Kenny to his right. Takes a snap. Loses the football. Chases it down and recovers it. Now just trying to run with it. Trying to escape and he cannot. Ultimately gets taken down behind the line by Newton North's number 77, Tommy McMillan. Loses quite a few yards on that one. Might have lost four yards. It's going to be third down and eight yards to go. So a tough setback for the Warriors. And they're running out of clock here. But they call a timeout, I think, with one second on the clock. So Brookline making sure that Newton North isn't getting the ball back, even for a second. But it's a bold strategy. Basically, they have to go for the end zone now. And so Newton North is just going to pack the goal line. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Oh, they're going to line up for a field goal. It's going to be a 41-yard attempt for Matthew Richardson. He had one PAT blocked earlier today, and now we've got a timeout called by Newton North to try and ice the kicker. Uh, comment in the live chat from Natalie McMillan. Let's go Tom, number 77. Of course, that being Tommy McMillan, who just got the big sack after uh, Brookline juggled that's uh juggled the high snap and that sort of forced him back and they decided to just sort of run out the clock and put the rest on the foot of their kicker so it's going to be interesting to see this is going to be uh ending on s uh, a bit of drama here as uh brookline is trying to extend their lead from 15 points to 18 points which is a huge difference because that does make it a three-score game if they make this. Richardson is one for three on PATs. The one that was blocked was called back due to an offside. Let's see what happens here. Snap down. Kick is on the way. And that's through. Matthew Richardson. Just barely got it through the uprights. It dropped just over the crossbar. And that 41-yard field goal sends us into halftime. The score, Brookline 24, Newton North 6. As we head into halftime again, I am Jesse mayfield Chan. Thank you so much for tuning in for live coverage of this high school Thanksgiving football game. And uh, as I said before, this is our first game. Uh, if you've been following my broadcast, this is the first game that, we're ha that we have paying sponsors. I read one earlier, and now we've got a second one. Again, a locally run business, and this one is Harvest Wealth Management. We have a message for all you parents out there who are watching and listening to the game, who are thinking about how you're going to pay for college for your young student athletes. It's never too early to start planning for college, especially if you think you'll need financial aid. The average cost of a private four-year college in the U.S. today is over $50,000 a year. And if your student is interested in one of the many top-tier colleges in our area, the cost could exceed $70,000 a year. But don't despair. There are many financial aid and other college funding strategies available to you to reduce your out-of-pocket college costs by tens of thousands of dollars per child per year. But you need to start early. Be proactive and learn the financial aid rules to take advantage of these strategies. Harvest Wealth Management of Needham, Massachusetts can help you realize your student's college dream. Harvest Wealth Management is a full-service financial planning firm. They specialize in helping families with college-bound children maximize their financial aid and utilize other tax-driven strategies to reduce college costs. 
For many families in the middle class today, it is impossible to save enough for their children's college education. Harvest Wealth Management believes it is not about saving more for college, but paying less. They can design a customized college funding strategy for your child and lead you through the financial aid process, which can be confusing and where mistakes can be costly. So don't stress. Call Oliver Shawley at Harvest Wealth Management, 781-902-0981, and ask for a complimentary meeting. Or visit them online at harvestwm.com to learn more. Again, that is Harvest Wealth Management, LLC, at 75 2nd Avenue, Suite 420, Needham, Massachusetts, 02494. Call 781-902-0981 or visit them online at harvestwm.com. Advisory services offered through Commonwealth Financial Network, a registered investment advisor. And uh, again, if you weren't able to catch my ad reads, sponsors are do have their information in the description of this video below. Uh, you can see links and phone numbers to both Music Go Round Boston and Harvest Wealth Management. Thanks to, again, big thanks from myself personally to both of them for sponsoring this video. Um, you know, uh, and, you know, show them your support uh, as we watch the Brookline High cheerleaders with their halftime, uh, you know, performance here. Because the more sponsors that, uh, that I'm able to procure on a regular basis, the more I'm able to keep things affordable for the teams as I try and develop this into a full-time prof profession on, upon which I can support myself and stay in the area and keep this going. Again, nice to see the performances of not just the players and the coaches, you know, shout outs to the cheerleaders as this is Brookline High's performance of their cheer routine. I think the Newton North cheerleaders are up next after this. Nice that both schools get a chance to perform and really show off their stuff. So that was the Brookline High cheer team. And so a round of uh, applause from the crowd for the Brookline High cheerleaders. Again, I encourage you in the live chat, you can shout out uh, to players, coaches, cheerleaders, whoever. As we've got a shout out now from Lisa D. Shout out to Sir Ball Boy for Newton North High School. Great work, buddy. Um, you know, I'm not as familiar, but to the Newton North community, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys uh, know what that's all about. And you know what? How about Sir Bowel Boy? Um, from Trips Never Loses, is this halftime? Yes, it is. Um, you know, if you're just joining us, we are at halftime. The score at half, the Brookline High Warriors 24, the Newton North High Tigers 6. Um, and we are just currently watching the performances from the cheerleaders. We just had the Brookline High cheerleaders. Now we've got the Newton North High cheerleaders. And so that was the Newton North High cheerleading squad. As we got another couple of shout outs from Debbie Drucker, uh, Go Hayden, which again I assume is for the Newton North quarterback Hayden Willen. And from Yayo, shout out Top Shotta CJ. Um, 
And again, from Debbie Drucker, great announcing, making it fun. Thank you so much. I, you know, hope I'm able to make this entertaining, give you a, you know, a fun avenue for watching your favorite football teams and players. As it looks like we got a performance from what looks like the dance team for Newton North High. And so that, I believe, was a performance from the Newton North High dance team. And I got to say, I was impressed. I mean, so, some of those techniques were stuff I haven't seen before. That stuff where they all, like, linked their legs and turned themselves into one single wave. That was cool. And we got another shout-out from the chat from Lisa D. Once again, way to go, Tiger cheerleaders. Special love to Gabriella B. for making the team as a freshman. And I love that. I love these more unconventional shout outs we're getting from you, Lisa. That's awesome. Uh, again, uh, I encourage that. As now the PA announcer calling for a round of applause for the Brookline High boys soccer team that of course uh, came out with a thrilling victory in double overtime in the state finals last weekend against Newton North of all teams. Uh, if you've been following my broadcasts, you know we had that one covered. Uh, what a thrilling contest that was. Hats off to both teams really on that one, but uh, ultimately someone had to win, and the winner was Brookline with the game winner coming in stoppage time of double overtime by Isaac Heffes. Shout out to them, and of course, shout out to the players on the gridiron so far. You know, like I said, the coaches, the other team staff members, the cheerleaders and dancers that we just saw perform at halftime. So much to be thankful for on a day like today. Uh, from Written by Rel, shout out to cancer survivor Dave, class of 2002. <coughs> and again, I'm loving that. I love the, you know, it doesn't have to be a player on the field. It doesn't have to be, you know, it can be anybody. Anybody you think is deserving of a shout out here on this Thanksgiving Day game, shout them out. And in that vein, I'm going to give a bit of a shout out myself, a bit of a PSA, if you will, uh, for a local uh, nonprofit trying to do some good that is very related to this Thanksgiving Day and its uh, and its theme of food and you know being thankful for all the great people in our lives. So, without further ado, a shout out to the Brookline Food Pantry. The Brookline Food Pantry provides groceries to Brookline residents in need of food assistance. 
the pantry saw a huge increase in demand for food assistance at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, and that number unfortunately has not gone back down. Since March 2020, the food pantry has served and continues to serve an average of 650 to 700 households each week, more than four times the rate of families served pre-COVID. The Brookline Food Pantry is fighting the good fight to end hunger in our community, and they are always looking for more people willing to lend a hand, whether through monetary donations, direct food donations, or volunteers in the pantry. Food donations can be made at United Parish at 210 Harvard Street in Brookline on Wednesdays from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and on Fridays from 9.30 a.m. to noon. Visit brooklinefoodpantry.org or call 617-800-5339 for more information about how you can volunteer with the pantry or do make donations to help feed your community. Once again, that's brooklinefoodpantry.org or call 617-800-5339. And just like my paying sponsors, uh, the links and phone numbers for the Brookline Food Pantry are also going to be in the description of this video. So you can see those even, uh, you know, even if you missed it during my read. You know, if you want to find out more about either of our paying sponsors, Music Go Round Boston or Harvest Wealth Management, or if you want to know more about the nonprofit where we just shouted out, the Brookline Food Pantry, you know, take a look at the description. You can see information there. So we are about ready to get the second half underway. A little less than two minutes to go. Once again, Jesse Mayfield Sheehan, happy to bring you live coverage. As, uh, whoa, our live chat's starting to explode. From Sam Bunk, Chase and Bamberg are my idols. Uh, referring to, of course, Brookline running back Chase Halfkenny and receiver Andrew Bamberg. Both of them had some plenty of big plays in the first half. From Thomas Rooney, shout out Hayden for being a beast which, again, I think refers to the Newton North quarterback, Hayden Willen. Um, from Diego Zuniga, uh, a beast uh, follow-up there. Um, as I'm pretty sure I've got that right. You know, we're just operating on, on first names with some of these shout-outs, so I'm doing my best. Uh, from Sam Bunk, shout-out to Fenno Galaberta for delivering the water. Uh, from Aiden Yumina, yes, sir, Hayden. Uh, from Written by Rel, where can we sponsor you, uh, Venmo? Well, if you just want to make a simple mon monetary donation, there are links to my PayPal and Venmo in the description of this video as well. Um, but if you want to find out more about, uh, you know, sponsoring me through a business, like if you own a local business and you'd like to be a sponsor of these broadcasts, you can reach out to me through email. My email address also in the description of the video below, um, jgms88 at gmail.com. Um, and then our last, our most recent comment in the live chat from Diego Zuniga, Jacob DeMeo equals star player. So I'm loving this. I'm loving the shout outs from people. Keep those coming, you know, keep spreading the love, spreading the good word here on this Thanksgiving day as we get ready now for the opening kickoff of the second half. Brendan O'Gwin launches it for Newton North. That one's going back deep. And the Brookline returners are just going to watch it go into the end zone. And they're going to give it up. And that'll be a touchback. So the Brookline offense will start from their own 20-yard line. First and 10 as they try and put some more points on the board. A thrilling first half for Brookline as they took a uh, handy 24-6 lead. But they know they can't let their foot off the gas. They've given up one huge play on defense that resulted in Newton North's six points. And those plays can happen again. You know, things can get out of hand if you if you take your foot off the gas and rest on your laurels. So the Brookline offense is going to be trying to move the ball here, starting with first and 10 on the 20. Joshua Karp had a number of beautiful passes in the first half. Uh, one QB sneak touchdown and one QB sneak two-point conversion. Let's see what he does to start here. He's going to hand it off to Chase Halfkenny, who gets... Stuffed at the line, maybe a one-yard gain, maybe two. Of course, Chase Halfkenny also had a rushing touchdown himself uh, in the first half. 
<clears throat> as Carp and Halfkenny's runs accounted for two of Brookline's three touchdowns. Their first touchdown out of those three, of course, coming on a pick six by Keitano Drinkwater. Carp takes the snap, drops back, throws a quick out, and it skips in the dirt, does not reach the receiver. Incomplete intended for Nico Braun. It'll be a third and nine for Brookline from their own 21-yard line. Certainly not the way they wanted their offense to start here. Two receivers on either side of Carp. Third and nine. Snapped Carp, drops back to pass. Fires across the middle, he's looking for Braun. He caught it! Another pretty rainbow from Joshua Carp, this time to the co-captain, Nico Braun. That one crosses midfield. It goes all the way from the Brookline 21, all the way to the Newton North 46. Or no, uh, 36, excuse me, I was counting wrong. So that's about a 43-yard pass from Carp to Braun. A huge third down conversion, and now Brookline's offense is moving. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Half Kenny to the right of Carp. Fakes the handoff, quick throw, hits Drinkwater, and Drinkwater burrows ahead for a pretty decent gain there. How about Keitano Drinkwater doing a little bit of everything today? He's had some nice tackles on defense. He had the big pick six. He's had a few nice catches here and there. I mean, he's been doing everything on both sides. And you always like to see that uh, in a high school football player, the ability to provide on both ends. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Carp takes a snap. He juggles it. He barely picks it up, and there was a flag on the play. Offsides on Newton North. So Brookline not only dodges the bullet of almost losing the fumble, but they actually get to move ahead on the offsides call against Newton North. Almost a huge, almost a huge recovery by Newton North's number 88, Ethan Exidy. But instead, it'll be first and 10 for Brookline. At about the Newton North 23 or 24. Snap to Carp. Carp drops back. Pass rush in his face. Runs to his left. Still running. Running out of room. Hit. I think he was behind the line there. And a big sack and a penalty flag. Oh, a costly mistake. The sack was made by Bryce Busa, but then it looked like he was taunting afterwards. And you know those taunting rules. They can be awfully strict at the high school level and, well, frankly, even at the pro level these days. And so back-to-back -back costly penalties for Newton North. As they call the unsportsmanlike penalty on Newton North. I think this might give Brookline another first down. And indeed it will. So back-to-back -back first downs off penalties committed by the Newton North defense. First and ten. The North so now it'll be first and 10 from the 13. Carp takes the snap, gives to Halfkenny. Halfkenny bursts up the middle, still churning his legs. Goes ahead for a pretty nice gain. Number 10, Chase Hafton on the play. Second and about five for the Warriors after the run by Halfkenny. Again, two receivers either side of Carp. 
Snapped Carp, fakes the give, throws across the middle, off the mark intended for Drinkwater. Overthrew his man a bit. Drinkwater was thinking a high throw. Carp was thinking a far throw. Just kind of miscommunicated there. And a throw just off the mark. Third down now for the Warriors, about five yards to go. And this is one of those areas where you wonder if they don't make it, will they go for another field goal or will they keep trying for the end zone? Snapped Carp, gives to Halfkenny. Halfkenny trying to burst up the middle, still churning his legs and he's gonna be dragged down and he's gonna be short of the first. I think it's gonna be fourth and about a yard to go. And so now, Brookline head coach Chad Hunt has to make a decision. So fourth and two, and they're going to keep the offense out there. They're going to try and keep things going. Big fourth down here. Two backs to the right of Carp. So Brookline showing a running formation. Take the snap. Fake the give. They're trying to go for that same play that got them in the two, but I think they're going to get dragged down. The tackle is again made by number three, Bryce Busa. As he stops Carp short of the first, this will be a turnover on downs. So Busa, of course, had the big quarterback sack earlier this possession that was undone by a taunting penalty, but he makes up for it with a big fourth down stop there, and Newton North takes over. 7.55 on the clock here in the third. They still trail by three scores. 24 to six is the mark on the scoreboard right now. Brookline in the lead. Hayden Willen, the quarterback in shotgun, sends a man in motion. Shovel pass to Sioye. Sioye finds the edge on the right side, hits a tackler, gets through him, but gets dragged down from behind. Another shovel pass to Subomi Soyoye, and he gets a nice gain on that one. Second down and one yard to go. Tigers just moved past their own 10 as they're trying to dig themselves out of their own backyard. Another shovel pass. This one's to Rather. Rather trying to get the edge. Dragged from behind. Lost ball. And Newton North falls on it. A heads up recovery by number two, Clinton Jacobs. As it was Akil Rather who took the shovel pass. Crossed the first down marker easily, but almost lost the football for the Tigers. As he was being tackled by uh, a couple of guys there. I think the first one to grab him, um, I think, was number 26, Cam Lazama. But instead, it's going to be a simple first and 10 from the 19 for Newton North. They send a tight end in motion, take the snap, hand off to Rather. Rather gets stuffed immediately. First guy there is number, uh, number 77, William Finkley. So it looks like... They got him for no gain. It was, I thought maybe they dropped him for a loss, but simple no gain on the play. Six minutes and counting left in the third, and it'll be second and 10 from the 19-yard line for Newton North. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Willen takes the snap, rolls out to his right. Flags are already thrown. A pass is completed. He finds Exidy, who runs up the line for the first down, but we'll see what the flag calls are. Those flags came out pretty fast. So we'll see what the official call is here.
and it's a false start or maybe an illegal formation or something, maybe an illegal motion on uh, Newton North. Whatever it was, the penalty is on them. And so instead of a big first down pass from Willen to Exidy, that's going to uh, it's going to be a dead play and maybe a loss. Yeah, a loss of five yards on the play, or on the non-play, I should say, because it's simply a uh, simply a penalty. So it'll be second and fifteen from the Tigers' own fourteen-yard line. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Snap to Willen, fakes the handoff, pass rush in his face, floats off a pass, intercepted again. Sean Ebanks. Pick six, number two for Brookline. The pass rush was immediately in his face. And I think I saw number 77 again, William Finkley, who had broken through the line, gotten right in Hayden Willen's face. He tried to float one out to Rather. He got away with that earlier this game for a huge gain, but this time... Off the mark, Rather wasn't ready for it, and he juggled it, kept it in the air for another pick six. 30 to six, now the score in favor of Brookline. Off the pick six by Sean Ebanks. Matthew Richardson lines up for the PAT, and the kick is up and through. Richardson with his second successful PAT on top of the 41-yard field goal that he hit at the end of the first half. And the score now, Brookline 31, Newton North 6. The Tiger defense came through with a big fourth down stop to get the ball back and stop the Brookline offense. But then, second interception of the day for Brookline, well, third but the second one to stand without a penalty and the second one returned all the way for a touchdown the first one was by Caetano Drinkwater and now the second one by number 50 Sean Ebanks that marks two rushing touchdowns two pick sixes and a field goal that make up Brookline's scoring so far today Newton North had the one big 50-plus-yard 50 50 plus yard passing touchdown. But since then, the offense has gone cold. Richardson after the PAT, now lining up for the kickoff. And it's a short one. It's a squib. It's picked up. It's being run back and tackled just past the 40-yard line. I think that might have actually been returned by uh, the deep returner. Uh, I, a Johnny Gordon. He's been doing most of the kickoff returns as most of the kicks have just gone to him. Five minutes, eight seconds left here in the third quarter. The score, Brookline High 31, Newton North 6. Willen in shotgun, three receivers to his right, one to his left. Takes the snap, drops back, looks one way, now looks over the middle, throw, picked off again! This one is Cameron Evans! A third interception for the Brookline defense. Willen just undercut that route, or, or Evans uh, undercut that route, a big interception for the junior, Cameron Evans. How about the Brookline defense today? So the Brookline offense now takes over, three receivers to the left, one to the right. Snap to Carp, give to Halfkenny. Halfkenny runs up the middle, finds a bit of a hole for a nice gain. 
Everything's coming up Brookline right now. A commanding four score lead, 31 to six here in the third quarter. And now after the run by Halfkenny, it'll be second and three from the Newton North 45 yard line. Two receivers either side, Halfkenny to the right of Carp. Snap, give to Halfkenny. Halfkenny gets hit at the line, and I think he might have been taken down behind the line. That might be a loss of one. <clears throat> First one to hit him, I think, was Newton North's number 54, Ian Cotter. Then, of course, the cavalry showed up and dragged him down. Looks like no gain, but also no loss on the play. Ball remains at the 45. It'll be third down and three for the Warriors. So th uh, we got trips right, one to the left. Snapped Carp, fakes the give. Screen pass to Braun. Braun's got some space. Drag down just short of the first. And a penalty. Oh, this might be a horse collar. That was a harsh, uh, harsh snap of a takedown, and we'll see what the call will be. The tackle was made by number 23, Jason McNew, on Brookline's number one, Nico Braun. And indeed, the penalty is going to be against Newton North, and it's a personal foul, and it is a horse collar. So the horse collar tackle uh, ends up being another costly penalty for the Newton North defense. They've had a few tough penalties throughout this game. And so the clock's still running as people standing around. Uh, it looks like Brookline's waiting to get the play call. Now they have it, two receivers on either side. First and 10 from the Newton North, 28. Halfkenny to the right of Carp. Takes the snap, give to Halfkenny. Halfkenny hits a wall and has nowhere to go. And a little bit of extracurriculars at the end of that play, and that's another flag. More flags, a whole bunch of flags. Sparks fly a bit there. And I think that one is going to be against Newton North again. And my goodness. I mean, historically, no love lost between uh, these two programs. They do have a long standing rivalry as we've now got a bit of a stoppage in play as the refs confer on this one. Again, the score, Brookline 31, Newton North 6, 2 minutes and 41 seconds on the clock. Here in the third quarter, Jesse Mayfield, Chan, happy to bring you live coverage of this Thanksgiving Day high school football contest. Remember, if you're enjoying the broadcast, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and stay up to date on all my upcoming live streams, particularly with the winter season short approaching. Uh, engage in the live chat. You know, we've had a bunch of very nice shout outs uh, from, you know, both Brookline fans and Newton North fans. I love to see it. We've had plenty of shout outs for players, as well as for non players, some cheerleaders, some ball boys, you know some water delivery guys, you know, what have you. Um, and of course, uh, you know, check out the description of, the, of this video, the video description in the text below. Uh, you can see uh, information about our paid sponsors for today, Music Go Round Boston and Harvest Wealth Management of Needham. Uh, you can see links to their websites, their phone numbers, so you can contact them and find out more about 
those businesses that have been so generous as to sponsor this broadcast. You can also find out more uh, about the nonprofit organization, the Brookline Food Pantry, uh, that we've shouted out uh, here today. Uh, good charity cause to uh, contribute to at any time of the year, but especially Thanksgiving, um, especially with the cold of winter coming up. And of course, you can also, in the description of this video, find a link to my own personal website, jessiesports.com, where you can find out more about me, the services I provide, and how you can commission those services, uh, or how you can just contact me to find out more. So we've got a meeting of the coaches now with the officials after, you know, uh, sparks started to fly at the end of that last play. Chase Halfkenny, the Brookline runner, got stuffed on that one, but uh, Newton North got a little uh, emphatic uh, with their tackle at the end, continuing to push and shove to the ground even after the whistle had been blown. Flags were thrown, you know, tempers flared a little bit, and we saw some pushing and shoving after the play. And since then, it's been a conference of officials and now head coaches. So it looks like we've got an, now an official called timeout on the field. Because, I mean, part of what they got to figure out, this is the last game of the year for these, for these teams. You know, Thanksgiving really does mark the end of the football season. It marks the end of the fall, really. Um, and so when you've got something like that, and, you know... When it comes to things like that, you always wonder about the possibility of like long-term consequences for a player, like suspensions or something like that. But when you've got the last game of the year, what do you do? You know, they, that's something they got to worry about. And so they even brought, it looks like Brookline Athletic Director Pete Rittenberg was even brought out. Looks like they're going to call offsetting penalties on both teams for what happened there. So what it seems like is they called a personal foul on Newton North, presumably a late hit call, and then they called offsetting unsportsmanlike penalties on both teams. Uh, you know, as, as like I said, tempers kind of flared at the end of that play. <coughs> so the personal foul is going to give Brookline a first down and move them further. Uh, whereas the unsportsmanlike penalties all offset and all took place after the play. So it'll be first and 10 for Brookline, 2.41 on the clock. They're at the Newton North 17-yard line now. And we now finally get a chance to resume play. Looks like... Two receivers to the right, one to the left, and two backs to the right of Carp. Snap, handoff to Half Kenny again. He goes up the middle and gets stuffed once again. Brookline, you know, clearly just kind of trying to run out of the, out the clock with some more conservative play calling. Um, you know, as they do have a pretty substantial lead here late in this one. But Newton North reading that conservative style, and they're stuffing a lot of these runs. From Lisa D., happy Thanksgiving, everyone. We have a ton to be thankful for. Lisa, I couldn't agree more. Second and eight after the short run, two receivers either side. 
Carp takes a snap. Handoff. No, they fake the handoff. Carp takes off by himself, but he's dragged down for a sack by Ethan Exidy. So clock still running. Less than a minute and a half left here in the third quarter. And after that five-yard sack by Exidy, it'll be third and 13 for the Warriors. And we've got a false start. Carp might have gone for a hard count there, but only faked out his own teammate. And so it's now going to be third and 18 for Brookline. I mean, potentially, Brookline could still get into at least field goal range. The score right now is Brookline 31, Newton North 6. A minute and six uh, and counting left here in the third quarter. Snapped Carp, drops back, looking to throw. Fires down the left side. Caught, was his feet in bounds? Yes, touchdown! Caetano Drinkwater scoring on both sides of the ball. How about Caetano Drinkwater today? And how about the passing abilities of Joshua Carp? The sophomore throwing several beautiful floaters. And that one goes for a 20 plus yard touchdown that now makes the score 37 to six. Matthew Richardson back out for the PAT. Snap, hold down, kick up. Kick is through. 38 to six. Now the score in favor of the Brookline Warriors after about a 25 yard touchdown pass from Joshua Karp to Caetano Drinkwater. Drinkwater now has two touchdowns on the day, one defensive and one offensive. He had the pick six that got the scoring started on Newton North's opening possession, and now the receiving touchdown as he just toe-tapped on the edge of the end zone there. So now Richardson on the back of another successful PAT is back to kick. Richardson now I believe three for four on PATs and one for one on field goals. So he's accounted for six of Brookline's 38 points today. He boots this one. And it's taken deep. And a big hole up the middle. Oh, this is a big run back. This is going to go deep. This is Jacob O'Gwin. Oh, Brendan O'Gwin, excuse me. Brendan O'Gwin with the big return for Newton North. The biggest run back we've had on a kick all game. There's only been one punt all game today. Newton North punted on their first possession of the second half. Oh no, my mistake. I think uh, Richardson actually, no, no, Richardson didn't punt. He was lined up to punt, but then an offsides penalty against Newton North prevented that. So I think there's only been one punt from both teams all day today. It's been an exciting one to say the least. We've got a new quarterback in the game for Newton North now. This is number 12, TJ Cox. Empty backfield start, three receivers to the left, two to the right. Sends a man in motion, shovel pass to Rather, Akil Rather heading for the sideline. Now going up the sideline, gets hit and taken down. But after a pretty nice gain by Rather, as the last seconds ticking away here in the third quarter, less than 20 seconds to go. 
38-6, to six, the score in favor of Brookline. <clears throat> Cox sends a man in motion. Fakes the shovel pass. Hands off to Rather. Rather trying to bounce to the outside. Gets dragged down. Or not down. He stays on his feet but lost forward progress. And the play was blown dead. That was the last play of the third quarter. I think the tackle was made by number 81, Caetano Drinkwater. I don't think that's going through the PA, man. So that was the last play of the third quarter. The score through three, Brookline 38, Newton North 6. Once again, Jesse Mayfield Sheehan, happy to bring you live coverage of this Thanksgiving Day high school football contest. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, engage in the live chat, send out all the shout outs, all the things and the, all the people you're thankful for in the live chat or in the comment section if you're watching this game after the fact as this broadcast will remain up on my YouTube channel even after the live stream is over. So if you've missed parts of it, don't fret. You will be able to see this later. And of course, remember to check out the description of this video for information about our sponsors, Music Go Around Boston and Harvest Wealth Management, as well as the nonprofit, the Brookline Food Pantry. Snap to Cox to start the fourth quarter. He's looking to throw, hits a man over the middle. And he's in. That's a touchdown for Newton North to start the fourth. Caught by number seven, Subomi Soyoye. A 14-yard completion from Cox to Soyoye. Gets Newton North their first score since the first quarter. Score now 38 to 12. Clock's still running even as we await the point after attempt. Uh, this, you know, you know that is I'm pretty sure a, you know an MIAA rule like a mercy rule kind of thing. If you're up by enough, then they just give you a running clock. Newton North going to go for two. They send a tight end in motion. Low snap collected by Cox running away from the pass rush. Throws a pass broken up. Who else but Caetano Drinkwater? He's been everywhere on defense today. So 38 to 12, the score will remain as the clock continues counting down. Less than 11 minutes left to go in this one as Brookline leads by 26. Uh, another question on the score from Monafi on fire. Um, the score is Brookline 38, Newton North 12, as Newton North just scored on a 14-yard touchdown pass from T.J. Cox to Subomi Suyoye, but failed on the two-point attempt. Also love the little Pokemon reference in your name there, Monafi on Fire, although, uh, you know, not sure how effective that would be. Remember, fire attacks are not effective against water-type Pokemon. And it's an onside kick recovered by Brookline. Newton North tried to bunch up, but it's recovered by Brookline's number 10, Chase Halfkenny. Boy, they brought that quick. I was just starting to move my camera over, and then they tapped that onside kick. They were trying to catch Brookline off their guard, see if they could maybe get th some things moving. They still trail by four scores. The most you can get with three scores is 24 points, and that assumes three touchdowns and three successful two-pointers. And because Br Newton North failed that last two-pointer, they are down 26 instead of 24. Carp takes the snap, hands off. No, fakes the handoff, and he takes off and runs by himself. Cuts up field and gets a nice gain there. 
And we got a flag on the play. Holding call against Brookline. So they're going to be 10 yards back from the end of that last play. And so instead, it'll be first and 13 following the holding penalty. Snap to Carp, fakes the give to half. Kenny takes off and runs again. This time gets dragged down around the line, and we've got another flag thrown after a tackle on combined efforts from number 77, Tommy McMillan, and I believe number 54, Ian Cotter. Oh, I think they might be calling another holding penalty on Brookline. Oh, it's a face mask against Newton North. Looks like it's just a five yard face mask, so not a 15 yard. You know, just grabbing the face mask, not pulling it. And so we've got first down for the third time. First down and about six from the Newton North 46. Two receivers either side. Half Kenny to the right of Carp. Snap, handoff to Half Kenny. Half Kenny gets smushed by McMillan. And looks like no gain on the play. Might have lost a yard. And finally, it'll be second down. Six and a half minutes left here in the fourth quarter. 38 to 12, the Brookline lead. Snapped Carp, give to Half Kenny, up the middle, gets hit and finally dragged down after a decent gain on that one. Timeout called by Newton North. This will stop the clock with six minutes and 14 seconds. So the Brookline Warriors really s do seem to have saved their best performances for last. You know, their last regular season contest, they come out with a win over Sharon. And now in their Thanksgiving Day game, they get to treat their fans to what has so far been a very full performance on both sides of the ball. Really, all three phases have, have been extremely effective. The defense, of course, holding off the Newton North offense, coming through with three interceptions and two pick sixes. The offense has been able to move the ball, get some good drives, three offensive scores. Even the special teams, we had that thrilling field goal at the end of the first half by Richardson. Third and four for Brookline. Snap is juggled and lost. Still loose ball, and it's picked up by Newton North. It's picked up by Cotter. Cotter gets dragged down from behind at the end of the return. That snap was off the mark. It was it went right to the running back. He tried to he tried to be quick and grab it, but couldn't do it. Couldn't chase down the ball. Uh, Carp tried to chase it down, but he got uh, he got rammed by another. Newton North player, and then finally it was picked up by number 54, Ian Cotter, and he runs it back into Brookline territory as Newton North gets their first takeaway, their first defensive takeaway of the day, and now they take over. Just over five minutes left. Cox takes the snap, drops back, floats one up down the right side, broken up at the last second by Evans. Pass was intended for number 10, Brendan O'Gwynn. Broken up at the last second by number 32, Cameron Evans. It'll now be second and 10. Ball still around the Brookline 25-yard line. Snapped Cox, drops back to the pass. 
Now floating up to his left. He's got an open man, but broken up again at the last second. No pass interference call. Newton North is livid about that. It was Nico Braun on the coverage. Pass intended for Newton North's number four, Daniel Salem. And so it'll be third and 10. Salem was wide open when the pass was thrown. Might have taken just a little too long to get there. As now Cox drops back, pass rush in his face. Quick pass, broken up. Sean Ebanks again. As he cuts off the pass, attempted for Akil Rather. This will now be fourth and 10 coming up. A timeout called by Newton North. Clock freezes with four minutes. Brookline 38, Newton North 12. Newton North trying to put as much momentum together as they can in the last game of their season. Brookline trying to hold on to what is a pretty comfortable lead right now in the last game of their season. Out of the timeout they come. It'll be it'll be fourth and ten from the Brookline twenty-five yard line. Three receivers to the left, two to the right, empty backfield. Rather goes in motion. Now four receivers on the left. They fake the screen pass. Oh, here comes the pass rush. Cox trying to escape, and he cannot. The co-captain, Caden Nystwin. That fourth down sack by the co-captain, Caden Nystun, makes it a turnover on downs. Brookline will take over on offense. Less than three and a half minutes to go in this one and a 26 point lead. Two receivers either side. Brookline waiting out the clock. Here's the snap. Handoff. Bouncing to the outside. This is Cam Lazama taking off. Cam Lazama down the sideline. Almost gone. First carry of the day for Cam Lazama, and he makes it count. Barely Pulled out of bounds by number 16, Melvin Demedieros. It'll be first and 10 for Brookline at the Newton North 42. Oh, and it looks like they're saying Lazama stepped out of bounds a little bit before he got dragged out. Two minutes left now as the clock continues to run. And now Brookline calls a timeout. Five touchdowns and a field goal for Brookline today. A pair of pick sixes, one by Caetano Drinkwater and one by Sean Ebanks. A pair of short rushing touchdowns, a one-yarder by Joshua Karp, and a two-yarder by Chase Halfkenny, and then a 25-yard touchdown pass from Karp to Drinkwater. And of course, the 41-yard field goal by Matthew Richardson. For Newton North, 12 points off of two touchdowns, both passing touchdowns, a 150-plus yarder from Hayden Willen to Clinton Jacobs, and one 14-yarder from T.J. Cox to Subomi Sayoye.
out of the timeout now. Snap. Carp just takes it and takes a knee. So Brookline is just going to run this clock down. And we're about ready to wrap this one up. And unless anything crazy happens, this should end it. Oh, Brookline sneaking up on their coach with the Gatorade as they go for another knee. And there's the Gatorade bath from the Brookline players on head coach Chad Hunt as they are closing out a win over their rival Newton North in their annual Thanksgiving Day game. And what a game it has been. You know, it's certainly got to feel good for a built for a still building program, honestly. You know, to end the year on such a positive note as they have today. And there's one last knee. And it looks like that one is going to ride us out. That'll be the final play. The final score here on this Thanksgiving Day game, the Brookline High Warriors 38, the Newton North High Tigers 12. The Warriors come out of their Turkey Day contest with the victory. Hats off to the Warriors for a big win. And you know what? As this was the last game of the year, the last game of this fall season, just going to take a moment and shout out the senior classes of both squads. You know, first for the Brookline High Warriors. Among the senior class of 2022, we have number three, Matthew Richardson. Number eight, Adriano DeMarco. Number 15, Miles Whalen. Number 17, Parrish Hertz. Number 18, Charlie Ladge. Number 19, Rex Doob. Number 21, Jad Kassir. Number 26, co-captain Cam Lazama. Number 33, Aaron Feldman. Number 34, Enrique Rodas. Number 35, Max Little. Number 44, Benjamin Wilson. Number 50, Sean Ebanks. Number 61, Daquan Small. Number 62, Jack Stanton. Number 63, Aniket Majumder. Number 66, Haofeng Lin. Number 69, Brendan Higgins. Number 71, Gino Jock. Number 72, co-captain Caden Nystoon. That is the senior class of 2022 for the Brookline High Warriors. And now, because both teams deserve a shout out, a quick shout out to the senior class of 2022 for the Newton North High football team. Number one, co-captain Nate Leone. Number two, co-captain Clinton Jacobs. Number three, co-captain Bryce Busa. Number four, Daniel Salem. Number seven, Subomi Sioye. Number eight, Andrew Lunds. Number 12, TJ Cox. Number 15, Matthew Kearney. Number 16, Melvin Demedieros. Number 18, Billy Blumenthal. Number 23, Jason Mc McNew. Number 25, Peter Moradian. Number 31, Chase Jacob. Number 44, Jason Antonellis. Number 50, Holland Hargens. Number 52, co-captain Colin LaRossi. Number 53, Gavin Stein. Number 54, Ian Cotter. Number 61, Mayan Fogel. Number 62, Tom Kiesel. Number 73, Danny Barber. Number 77, Tommy McMillan. Number 81, Joe Murphy. And number 88, 
Ethan Exidy. So that wraps up the senior class for the Newton North High Tigers. Of course, both senior classes have plenty to be proud of this season. You know, just for a nice little return to normalcy after all the craziness that was, you know, the suspended fall season of 2020, the weird fall two season, and then the quick turnaround and how all the teams across the state have really produced in this quick turnaround from fall two to a normal fall season this year. Hats off to all the players, the coaches, you know, again, the trainers, the other athletic staff for really making all of this happen. But wrapping things up, I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan from Parsons Field in Brookline, Massachusetts. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Um, you know, even if you're watching this after the fact, you know, leave your comments in the comments section. Uh, check out the description of the video where you can find information on our paid sponsors. Big thanks to Music Go Round Boston and Harvest Wealth Management. You know, be sure to show your support to the sponsors so they can keep sponsoring me and I can keep my prices for these broadcasts affordable going forward as I try and turn this into a, a full-time living. And of course, also check out information about the nonprofit local charity, Brookline Food Pantry. Also in the description of the video, you can see a link to my website, jessesports.com. Find out more about me, the services I provide, and how you can contact me to find out more about how you can commission my services for your favorite team. Also in the description, links to my social media, Facebook and Instagram. You can follow me on those. Um, uh, you know, my email address in the description as well as if you just want to contact me directly. Um, as are links to my PayPal and Venmo if you'd like to send me digital payments or donations, whatever uh, it is you'd like to do. But I believe that wraps things up. couple last shout outs from Lisa D. We love the coach, love Anna, Dominic, and Marco. So thank you all for all your shout outs, all your kind words throughout this. A happy Thanksgiving to all. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your holiday, everybody. You know, uh, enjoy some good meals to all the players. Get yourselves home and enjoy yourselves a nice Thanksgiving meal. You guys have earned it. And until then, I'm Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. Signing off. Thank you all for watching.